All right, guys, we're getting ready to look at an ice machine that's not working correctly. One side was harvesting quicker than the other, almost to the point where basically the machine would lock out. And there were several times when the machine did lock out. Anyhow, the audio was recorded on the wrong side of the microphone, so it's going to sound a little bit different, but I think you guys will enjoy the video. We do replace the harvest valve for the right side and the filter dryer, and we do the proper evacuation techniques and things like that, which some of those things people may not agree with, but it is what it is. Let's go ahead and get started. And as always, thanks for watching. Consider subscribing. Make sure you hit the like button. It really helps grow the channel, which influences me to continue making videos for you. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. Good morning guys, we are here to work on an ice machine and this ice machine has been having issues not harvesting on the right side. The right side is slower, the left side is faster. Let's see what we got going on here. It doesn't want to harvest every time. What's that? Yeah. So. What we got is it's not one to drop. And the problem we found the last time I was here is we got about six degrees warmer on the right side than we do on the left side. We checked our temperatures here on our hot uh, gas valves here. This is where it brings in the cool vapor, as they call it. This side here works as it should. This side over here does not. And we're gonna be tight on the face here. So it's gonna be very tight. This dryer, it needs to be changed, which I didn't get the Dan Foss, so we're going to have to make a score one more. They claim it's special. The hot gas valve here is the one we're going to replace, which is fairly easy to get to. All the pumps work on it. Um, the filter charge was a little low a while back. Uh, did a leak search, couldn't find anything. They took the line set up through the wall, so you can't tell if they've made any connections in the wall, so it's very possible that they did. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing recovered. We gotta do a three-point evacuation on this because they do have solenoids and check valves in here. So we gotta make sure we get those, uh, uh, get around those so that we can get all the refrigerant out. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with our recovery. And we'll get our refrigerant tank prepped, get it back on it and uh, get her pulled out. 331. Find that off, see if we're holding. Looks like we are, it's not jumping up. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and use this T. I've got the valve core pulled out of the one, and I'm gonna pull it out of the other one. And then we'll just jump it with a hose down to it. Don't need it. So we'll go ahead and yank that out and that'll speed it up quite a bit. And you can see I've got that one yanked out too. Uh, it's liquid. So we're gonna go through the suction side because it doesn't have a dip tube, so we can actually expel it a little quicker. Okay, up there on top, you can see the ice machine is right here on the right hand side. So let's go ahead and start pulling liquid first. As you can see on the back side here, we come out with some 90s, go to another 90, and then makes a 90 there. Somebody just got way too happy with the 90s, and that refrigerant solder joint there looks like crap. And then if that's the case, I have a bad feeling they may have ended up doing fittings in the wall should have been ran with a freaking air conditioning line set, soft copper all the way up. That way there wouldn't have been none of that crap. I mean, it's fine outside here, but on the wall, I just say ignorant. There's no reason to really see anything change. Okay, I have one here. This was for another ice machine, and it's 3 8 This might... It's not often we have Emerson dryers. It's not very big. I mean, there's no desiccant value to it at all. That really, really, really scares me that it's not big enough. And then I restrict my flow and cause a callback. Right here is actually the Manitowoc one. But the problem is, it's quarter inch. So we'll just go with the 38083. We we'll carry a couple dryers in there, a little bit of everything. I'm not gonna run all over town to get a different brand dryer. Now we're up to a pound or two, good deal. Now we can release 
and let the pressure bleed off. So what we're going to do on this, we're just going to bleed some nitrogen through this right now. That way we can unbraze it and then we'll pretty much rebraze it back in after bleeding nitrogen through it. Okay, here's our valve. It came with multiple different copper fittings. You can see right there, there is a screen in front of that. At least that's what it looks like to me. And I think that there's just to help catch debris that's coming through so it doesn't get stuck in the in the valve uh, mechanism. I'd have a funny feeling somebody didn't use uh, nitrogen and it's probably gummed up full of charcoal crap. Compare it. Looks to me like it's the right one. Nothing worse than getting it apart and not be the right one. So that works pretty good there. We don't want to burn nothing up. So my good friends at Refrigeration Technologies gave me my Viper blanket here, which has worked really good, even with direct, you know, hits from the brazing torch, no problems. You don't have to wet it, but I like to wet it just as extra, because I want this thing to last. I mean, you can't outperform water. It's a lot cheaper than the other one that's very similar to it. Um, it's not as big, but generally I'm not swinging my torch all over the place, roasting everything. Let's check them while they're running, wide open. I okay, know I've got as much as we need. Now, so you guys know, even though this is stainless on the outside, it's copper on the inside. This is not going to take much heat at all to get this thing to warm up. You do not want to burn that copper coating off. And you can use regular brazing alloy for this thing. So keep that in mind and we're going to try to... Probably try to have to keep this thing wet. Uh, definitely wouldn't be a bad idea or get on and get off as fast as possible. Yep, there we go. That was the easiest way to do it. So we're going to hold it away from it so that it's cooling down. And then pull it away so it can't leave any goobers on it. And let's go ahead and see if we can pull this thing straight up. It should come right off. Okay, we're going right onto the copper. So after the copper, cut to the stainless screen, come right up. So we got on, we got off really fast. How fast do we get on and get off? Can I hold on to it? Yeah, I can hold on to that. That's how fast we got on and got off. Well, there's a little, little something black in that left hand corner. Let's go ahead and pull this down. Okay, and then uh, that way I can actually blow through it without burning my lips off. I always like to confirm, it makes me feel much better as I'm making a repair that I don't get it all back together and all of a sudden, oh my goodness, it don't work. So it still works. Hear the click. And let's go ahead and blow through this direction. It does not go through very quickly at all. It's very restrictive. Let's do it on this one. There's that one versus... You can hear the difference. There's a restriction there. Why it's restricted, I don't know. Maybe they got it too hot. Maybe some crap got in there. I don't know. Either way, that's definitely an issue. Purge this thing with some nitrogen, get all of it out of there. I can't keep it cool and a magnet on it to purge through and all that happy jazz. Not, not very, very easily. It would be great if we can get this thing completely together and then braze it. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do that very easily. And it's not like this stainless steel is going to flex. Okay, I'm going to heat up one at a time. I don't think I can get it on there quick enough and off of there quick enough to do it. Also, once again, my good friends at Wet Rag gave me some good stuff here. I like this better than the other stuff, even though they claim the other's a little bit better. Um, what I like about this is it doesn't leave residue all over the place. And it's not a pain in the butt to get it off. Uh, but we're going to pack this around the body of it. If you get too much in here, it's going to be really hard to get this thing hot. 
And the last thing we need to do is sit there and have to fight heat on this thing forever, trying to get it warm enough that we can breeze on it. You know what I'm saying? Because if you've got too much blocker on there, it can make it very difficult to get it hot enough to braise it. And you don't want any gaps between your putty and the metal. You want complete surface contact. You want conduction through the putty right to your item. So what we're gonna do, we'll heat that up, we'll shove it straight down, and then we'll add a touch of braze to it. We'll cool it back down, and then we'll put it together to the other one. This is really hard working condition here. I mean, you got crap everywhere. I can't put my stuff in other locations because everybody's walking right through here. We always put the ice machine right in the middle of the way because it's need, they need, everyone needs to get to it. And as I'm holding on to that with my hand. There we go. Chew it right in. And chances are as much alloy that's on there, we probably got all the way around it. Sure we got it in there. Let's go ahead and cool it down. That way I can handle it. This works really nice. Have a little bit of water right here. Yes, you don't want to cool down the joint right away, but we don't want to let it accumulate either. So I'm more worried about the valve potentially getting damage from heat than I am about the solder joint not being perfectly strong as possible. You gotta, you gotta kind of balance it. Okay, I will sometimes bend these towards each other so the tension is towards them. Like that. And then when I put them together and they line up, they should feed together fairly decent. Pushing tension on the one side. I'm gonna try to heat up this copper pipe here so that it goes towards it. Come on, baby. Oh, yeah. Honestly, I'm gonna heat it up a little bit and see if it sucked in. What we even doing? I'm gonna hold it there for a second. Okay. Way more heat than I wanted, but we got it. I'm not putting it directly on the joint. I'm actually putting it towards the back side of it where it's still just solid pipe. That way I'm not putting the cooling effect directly to it and kind of letting it conduct over to it. Some would disagree with that, but if I melt that mylar inside there, even though I've got all this other heat sink compound on there, I don't, I'm not taking chances. Looks to me that we are all up inside that. So we're gonna go ahead and take off our putty. We'll re-wet that and we'll throw it back in the uh, back in the pail there. See how easy that cleaned up? The other stuff seems like it just leaves a real nasty residue on there. Just, I don't know. I like helping those who help me, you know? If they believe in my channel and what I'm trying to do and they have a product that's good, hey, I'm all about helping them out. If they don't even know who you are, I'll see if their competitor knows who I am. And it's cheaper than the other stuff. Got 43 pounds on there. I can hear it going through. I think we're good. All right, let's go ahead and take that back off. And let's get that filter dryer yanked out of there. We're gonna go ahead and try to get a good straight section here. I just straightened it out. So we're going to go ahead and cut that, and then I'm going to show you a couple new expanding tools uh, that I got from a Hillmore here that not many people probably need unless you're doing the big stuff, but really is going to come in handy if I don't have a copper fitting and I need it. On to my Hillmore here. I've been wanting to get this for a while, and my good friends over at True Tech Tools got it for me. So here's an inch and an eighth, and here's an inch and three eighths. <laughs> 
So I've got now, and they make some of you know, all the way up to two inch, but here's a seven eighths. You can see the difference between seven eighths and inch and an eighth and compared to inch and three eighths. Usually that's the most uh, that I'll see uh, for most any repairs. Anything bigger than that, we're gonna get into, uh, you know, having what we need to do the repair we'll off fittings and miscellaneous things. It's not gonna be a spot repair. I just thought, hey, it's gonna come in handy. Um, if I wanted to show you guys that, that they do have that for your Hillmore. And as always guys, you can go on True Tech Tools, save yourself 8% on pretty much about everything. Uh, there's maybe some uh, items that aren't covered, but use promo survival. I uh, I pretty much get a finder's fee for you guys buying it. That uh, It lets them know that you guys are actually watching the channel. And so they continue to provide me stuff like this so I can show whether it works or not. And Because uh, I really don't make money off of it. It's just mainly in trade for the tools. And uh, so you can always trust my opinion on it. If it's something I don't like, I usually am not going to talk about it. Um, so when I like something, I like to talk about it a lot on anything up to anything bigger than three eighths, but I do it just in case. I'll do a slight swedge. I'll put my hand on it so I can feel it getting bigger. And, uh, there we go. We got ourselves a nice coupling and, uh, I've got it all the way down to quarter inch. I don't think there's anybody else, uh, any of them that's got one that goes down to a quarter inch, which you do have to heat up the metal a little bit if you don't want to split it. But it pretty much goes like that for any of them. Any of them that are using that same type of expanding device. I purchased this one with my own money, I don't know, a year or two, year, year and a half ago, Tech uh, Pack MC. I love the looks of it. Man, it's just, it's kind of big and bulky. I'm hoping that MB5B is going to be a little more uh, along the sizes of what I need. I need something just a little bit bigger. The big thing is something that can actually set up straight and not fall all over the place like the bag does. All right, so you can see this goober gobber here. They don't belong up here. That looks like it's 3 8 and somebody squeezed a half inch thing down and that could have been causing issues too. I don't know. Not gonna fool with it. Yeah, unfortunately, it looks like there's a lot of work been done on this line set. Oh, I got a little sandpaper here. We'll sand it up and we'll go down and put some nitrogen through it again. And we'll get this thing breezed in. We'll get a better look at it there. I don't know why they didn't put it downstairs where it belonged at. All right, let's go get some nitrogen on it. And you gotta watch this rubber roof too. Last thing you want is to drop some molten free stuff on there, which looks like so very easily could happen. We're gonna get that inside pipe warm first because that's the one that's gonna travel the heat into the unit, into the socket. Socket pocket, you know, I like to call it both things. And I'm mainly talking like this for the new guys you know that they don't you can't teach somebody how to braise real great in school you know when I came out of school I sucked they didn't really other than read a book off to you you got to learn it and develop it but you know it's sometimes you just see people put the heat on the outside here and just basic common sense things if you think about it but honestly I just like to throw out some of the things that I've learned over the way over the years to hopefully make it a little easier for other people. Nice and indulged. Looks like a solder joint. This one here has a metal piece on one side and the mesh on the other. So the mesh on this one is on the outgoing side. So in theory, yeah, if it backwashes, it's still gonna get caught coming back through. It's solid core on top of that. I'm sure I'll still be passing it out. It's not that hot. I mean, we it's, it's hot, but you know. And we can cool it down. I'd rather cool it down after the fact than I would beforehand when it comes to some of these. I've just had so many problems getting the dryer warm enough to absorb the heat that, like I said, you stay on it forever. That looks a little bit better than the old one did, for sure. We're gonna get that down here in the bottom. Get that thing a little bit warm and then it should pull 
right up into her nice and fast. Heat's gonna rise. Okay, a little warmer than I wanted, but the heat can get away from you pretty darn quick. I'm not perfect. Once again, Viper, big blue. And this one right here, get it all on the back side. We're looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and get this thing evacuated and get this thing up and run and see how it does. All right, this is a collaboration of straps. What we do is I hook on to my low side valve, pull the straighter, the receiver valve. I hook my low pressure gauge on the high side just to show that it's pulling through. So even though we're not pulling on a three point evacuation, we're in 30 inches of vacuum. So it means it's catching it through the suction. I also have this magnet on there too, which is probably helping it move around uh, bars through the liquid line. We're at 677. Okay, we just zeroed everything out. We bled everything all the way up to there. We're pulling off the liquid side of the tank. We're going to recover it right into the machine. Anyway, here's the instructions I didn't see. 15% silver solder is recommended, although silver bearing solder in the 5% to 55% range can be used. Seconds and direct heat to the solenoid socket. They call it sockets. All right, it looks like we got 190 ounces in there. So we lost uh, 10 ounces, 16 ounces, we lost a pound. Uh, that could have been from bleeding and things like that. And we go ahead and turn it on. I still got to add a pound of refrigerant. Already went up on the roof and uh, turned on the disconnect to it. All right, let's go ahead and zero that out. Six extra ounces, uh, eight ounces. So let's just go ahead and go 18 ounces. As we can see, we are at 21 degree evaporator, 99 degree condensing temperature, running 235, which our head pressure control is theoretically set to 225. Should be going in the real quick. We've got one valve, uh, we have one probe there on the outgoing side of the right side panel, and we have another one there on the outgoing side of that one. That will allow us to measure what our temperatures are if they're more in line together. And as far as our temperature on the actual vapor plate, you can see that we are pretty much neck and neck, 95, 95, 25, 25. Generally, it's not that close, but we're looking pretty good so far. Feeling the ice in your burn clothes, this thing has been making ice about every 10 minutes, 11 minutes, something like that. We are starting to get some clicks, which usually means we are done. Uh, it usually means we are starting to break ice. It's expanding too far. And usually this will go into harvest about any second now. We're at 13 minutes, 52 seconds. Let's see where we're at. We're at 18 minutes on outgoing evaporator temperatures. So there it goes. So unfortunately I don't have exact seconds on here, but we're going to watch this thing. And like I said, it had been dropping on one side versus the other. There we go. Now it's coming up a little bit. 65.4 versus... 63.2 and about four degrees there. So we're waiting to see which one drops first. Problem we're running into is the right side just would not drop at all. Uh oh, look at this, the right one was the problem and it looks like it might be. They're gonna do it at the same time. Sweet baby. Jesus, there we go. That is beautiful. We have over two minutes, three minutes, five minutes longer on that side, and it just would not drop. So right there is perfect. 
perfect, perfect, perfect. We're gonna watch a couple more times, and if that's the case, we were right, and we are good to go. Getting ready to release. We are 45 seconds into harvest. Left side's loosening up. Right side's loosening up. Temperature seven degrees. Oops, right side even dropped faster. Can't really count on how, how much warmer or not warmer it is, it seems, but definitely. Temperature's getting cooler on the right side, so it did shut it off, that's good. I don't tell me we're gonna have reverse problems now. That, that'd be a bunch of crap, wouldn't it? I wanted to replace all this crap at one time. There we go. All right, I apologize. The video obviously had the audio on the wrong side of the microphone, the front versus the back, so it's not gonna sound that great. If you made it this long, I really appreciate you guys watching it. It was already diagnosed, so sorry we didn't get around to getting uh, that recorded. At that time, we needed to get the job done and didn't really want to screw around uh, recording because there was a lot of diagnostics involved and a lot of different miscellaneous tests just to make certain what exactly was causing the problem. So it is what it is. I appreciate you guys watching it. I really do. And if you guys would, please hit a like and uh, consider subscribing if you haven't. Till next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.